Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, our first announcement is Velma Lang passed away earlier this week and her funeral was yesterday. So please keep her family in your prayers. Also, we have a food drive that starts today. Uh, we are gathering food for the food bank at Cama. Uh, I have a van and trailer outside, so if you have anything, you are more than welcome to place it in there. Also, uh, this Tuesday, uh, which is the 13th, we, Holy Cross, is hosting the circuit pastors meeting, the, the Vinkel, and um, we will have a divine service, and everybody is invited to come, and you can commune with our area pastors, so that is available to you. It's uh, Tuesday at 11 o'clock. It will be here. Uh, with that, we will follow our divine service as is laid out for us in our hymnal in the divine service setting too. And let us begin with our opening hymn. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father, most merciful God.
Dear beloved, I have good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. to you forever. O oh Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. You have turned Thanks to you forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep, and we will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness, and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. <clears throat> And I will feed them on the mountain of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. And I will feed them with good pasture. On the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, and they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes to us from the first letter to Timothy, the first chapter. <clears throat> I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus, our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy, because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, 
the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand in honor of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friend, friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost, just so I tell you. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
grace, peace, and mercy be unto you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us pray. Dear my gracious Father, bless us and keep us according to your mercy. Seek us out that we may have and hold all that we can bestow according to your compassion. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is September 11th. In just a few hours, it will be 15 years. 15 years ago, the tragedy of the towers, the Pentagon, Flight 93, all took place. Those are seared memories into the consciousness of America. We often see the pictures. We often are reminded of what took place. It is there that we, as this great nation, experienced loss. We experienced hurt. And we, together, came together. We were strengthened by the love of one another. Who and what we are. We saw this in the secular world. We saw what loss does. It creates the need to be together. It creates the need of support. It creates the want and desire to help and be a part of something that's bigger than just yourself. We saw the need to come together for protection. We saw the need to find comfort and solace within one another. These are all wonderful and great, and we should take time today to remember what took place because it changed who and what we are forever. And we now live in a completely different world. We operate differently, we think differently, and we struggle therein. Again, we as a nation experienced loss. We saw and helplessly watched these events unfold. Let's take this to a bigger idea. Let's take this into a bigger picture. We have God our Father in all creation, makes all things, speaks them forth, and says, this is good. He delivers all of creation to Adam, to Eve, and says, this is yours. And then what does God do? He watches the fall into sin. He watches loss. Adam and Eve no longer have that perfect relationship with God. Adam and Eve no longer listen to what God delivers. In fact, they actually run. They hide. We hear that God comes and walks in the cool of the evening. Where's Adam and Eve? They're hiding. God even says, where are you? We're hiding because we're naked and we don't want you to see us. The relationship is broken. And we suffer in that broken relationship. We suffer in the loss of perfection. We suffer in the loss of knowing the complete fullness of all that God bestows in a perfect way. We no longer delight in God's law. In fact, when we hear God's law, we see it as something we get to break, something that we get to delight in. We get to delight in the breaking, the feeding of the flesh, the pleasures and the desires and the wants of what, how, what and how I want it, not what God delivers out of his good and grace and mercy. This is the loss we suffer in, and it is the ultimate loss God saw within us. But now we're not left there. God didn't say, Adam and Eve, you continue to hide in the bush. I'm going to go stay over here in my perfect creation. What does God do? But he clothes them and then promises that they too will have salvation, that the Lord will come and redeem. The Lord will make right what we have broken. This is what we have. And even though we still to this day still suffer, still wallow in the broken relationship, 
It has been completed. It has been made new in Christ our Lord. We hear that the Pharisees see Jesus. And who comes around Jesus? But the sinners, the unclean, the filth of society, they flock to him. And the Pharisees and their high and mighty looking down at them. Who is this man that he would defile himself by just talking, let alone eating with them? Jesus, knowing their hearts, Jesus, knowing who they are, tells the two parables. And we have the third of the prodigal. But these two parables, the one of the lost sheep, what one of you would not leave 99 to go find that one and leave those 99 in open country, not in a safe spot, not with somebody else who will watch and guard them, but leave them out in the open to find that one, that one lamb who has gone astray. As you know, that one is you, for we often find ways to sneak away from the flock to go our own way, to blaze our own path, to make a name for ourselves. And that name is sin. That name is fallenness. That name is lost. That's what we do. We are great at getting lost. We run thinking we know what we can do and how we can do it and we'll do it ourselves. And then after a few left turns, where are we? We're alone, we're hurt, and we need help. And thanks be to God that the ultimate help comes to us. It's Christ our Lord who comes and comes to us, goes all the way into the depths of our sins, follows our path, our path of destruction picks us up out of our death, puts us on his shoulders, and carries us in his path, the path of light, the path of righteousness, the path of mercy, the path of forgiveness, the path to salvation. Notice it is in here that we don't follow, we don't obediently listen to him. He carries us because we do not have the ability to do what we are called to do. Therefore, go and be perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. Because of our inability, God picks us up and carries us, holds us, and brings us all his gifts. This is who we are. We are that little lamb that Christ our Lord holds and brings us back to the flock brings us back so that we may have the safety of his protection, his mercy, his grace, his love. What's amazing about this is that not any one of us deserve that kind of attention. Who of us deserve God coming in the flesh, coming to you, picking you up, carrying you to the depths of forgiveness, the depths of God's love, which is endless. This is where you are placed according to Christ. This is what I get to remind you of. This is what I get to encourage you to go forth and live out. Because again, we're that little lamb who's struggling to get out. We're the little lamb who wants to run and see the other places. We're the little lamb who wants to listen to another word. But Christ our Lord speaks loudly, so loud, that we get to hear what he gives over and over and over again. That's why we're here every Sunday, to be reminded of what is given. Nothing less than God himself in his body and blood to rescue you, to change you into his lamb, to change you into his treasured possession. In fact, Jesus goes on to tell us that when one repents, all of heaven rejoices. How amazing is that? That heaven notices you and what just took place 
in holy absolution, that you come here knowing that your hands are empty, that your works mean nothing, and that only in Christ do you have salvation, and you repent of your pride, you repent of your wayward ways, you repent of the thoughts that are askew from what God has given to you. And we repent in the faith that God has given to us to cling to his works, the works that were given to us. We have suffered loss, and we continue to live in that. But we have baptism. We have the forgiveness of sins. We have the very body and blood of Christ. We have the preaching. We have the reading. All these things are to fill that loss, which will be completed and given to us completely in the resurrection when we will be made new, fully and completely new. And the relationship that was once lived out in the Garden of Eden will be once again restored for all people forever and ever and ever. And we, together, will live in the great reunion, having the full, perfect glory of God bestowed upon us forever and ever. Yes, we may suffer loss here, but we look forward to the completion of what God has given to us in our baptism, in the forgiveness of sins, in the life that is to come only through Christ our Lord, who comes and rescues and carries us to eternity for his sake. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Together, let us stand as we continue with the Apostles' Creed found on 175. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, who in Christ will hear our prayers, and in his time will turn our mourning into dancing. Heavenly Father, heaven rejoices when sinner repents. Guard us against self-righteousness that sees no need to hear of Christ and his redemption, and preserve us in your word and grace, that as your people we might always be about the proclamation of repentance and the forgiveness of sins for the sake of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, protect us from all disobedience, profanity, sexual immorality, deceit, false doctrine, and all things that would make us unholy and defiled by sin. Sharpen our attention to your law, that we might not make excuses for lawlessness and in indulge our sinful nature. Preserve us continually in repentance, and in your love grant to us a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith for the sake of your Son, who came into this world to save sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you promise to be shepherd, to shepherd your people, your sheep, for the sake of Jesus. According to your word, seek the lost, bring back the stray, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. Have mercy on those who are in need, those who are hurt, and those who have requested our prayers. 
We pray this day especially for Doris, Elaine, Dana, Faye, Karen, Kathy, Roger, Pat, Marie, Marianne, Ruth, Wayne, Natalie, Craig, Ron, Sandy, Virginia, Joanne, Frank, Chuck, Kelsey, Melba, Leslie, Bill, Diana, Dakota, Tom, Jim, Mary Lou, Nancy, Chris, Harper, Norma, Charlene, Ken, Virginia, Norma, Garrett, Gary, Elaine, Kelly, Tom, Melba, John, Leona, Eloise, Dennis, Peggy, Alfreda, Leona, Peggy, Alicia, Margaret, Amy, Mike, Ron, Mona, Nathan, and for the family of Velma, along with those who we name in our hearts. Send forth your mercy, your peace, and your comfort upon all who look to you for deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you seek out your sheep from all nations and gather them into your fold. Remember all refugees who have been displaced from their homes because of threats and violence. Provide for their needs in their time of displacement and grant them the security of a home once more. Likewise, provide for the needs of immigrants. Grant wisdom to nations for the welfare of both citizens and sojourners and grant that you, your people might provide, prove to be good neighbors for all who are scattered far from home. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, on this day of remembrance in our land, remember us always, remind us always of the realities of evil and death.